Good evening. Welcome to the CRA meeting of the City of Titusville on August 11, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. We have a quorum. I'll call the meeting to order. In lieu of an invocation, please join me in a moment of silence. Please stand and join me in the pledge of the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, please read the uh, proce procedures for speaking to council this evening. Individuals wishing to speak on agenda items must complete a sign-up card and present it to the clerk prior to the item being introduced. Sign-up cards are available on the table in the council chamber. Individuals wish wishing to speak on non-agenda items may do so under petitions and requests from the public present. No sign-up card is required. Citizens will be given three minutes to speak on all agenda items. City Attorney, please read the rules for the meeting. The Community Redevelopment Agency meeting may be conducted by utilizing communications media technology as provided in Section 120.545B2 Florida Statutes without having a quorum of council physically present in the council chambers. In order to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus and to comply with all local, state, and federal laws and guidelines regarding social distancing and social gatherings, designated seating shall be provided for the public within City Hall. Individual speakers shall, when directed to do so, be given the opportunity to speak on agenda items at City Hall during the meeting in accordance with the City of Titusville Resolution Number 16, 2020. Signs held by speakers are permissible, but no tripods, easels, props, or other demonstrative aids shall be brought into City Hall. In addition to the regular broadcast of the Community Redevelopment Agency meeting via closed circuit television and live stream YouTube video, which may be accessed through the City's website, Video and audio of the meeting will also be provided within City Hall for the public in attendance. As an additional method for public participation, the public may submit written comments via email to city.agenda at titusville.com or by regular mail to Community Development Agency's attention at City Hall, 555 South Washington Avenue, Titusville, Florida, 32796. Written comments must be received by noon prior to the start of the meeting and include the sender's name, address, and the subject line must specify the agenda item being addressed. All comments will be disseminated to the community redevelopment agency members and made part of the public prior to any action being taken. Speakers who appear in person will be subject to screening for symptoms of COVID-19, and any persons exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 will not be permitted to enter City Hall. Thank you, sir. First item of business is approval of minutes for Tuesday, July 14th, 2020. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes of the CRA meeting on July 14th, 2020. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Uh, any further discussion? Not hearing any. Roll call vote, please, Clerk. Member Aker? Yes. Member Jordan? Yes. Member Nelson? Yes. Chairman Johnson? Yes. Vice Chairman Diesel? Yes. Member Stokel? Yes. Member Ball? Yes. Passes unanimously. City Manager, please introduce the next item. Yes, sir. We're on uh, agenda item 6A. Mr. Stephen Heron, the executive director of the Tysville Playhouse, will present a PowerPoint update of the, to the Community Redevelopment Agency on the Playhouse's future plans. Stephen? Good, good, good. Sir? You, you can take it off as long as nobody's near you. Hi, everybody. Hi there. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to brag a little bit about the theater and to catch up and, and tell you a little bit that, that's happened this past year. Well, it's happening now and what we hope to happen in the future. So right I got ahead. a little presentation for you. Um, there we go. The um, Titus will past, present, and future. First, let me say thank you for letting me speak today. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys... Uh, cleared a letter to be written on our behalf that we included in our state grant and that support always 
weighs so heavily to all the panelists that judge those grants. So thank you because they always look to us and say, do you have the support of your community and your, your, your city? So thank you so much for approving that and doing that. Um, I want to quickly touch base. Our season uh, takes place from June 1st through May. So we just wrapped up our 55th season and you'll see there. Uh, run through a quick couple of numbers for you. Our first show was Matilda, and we brought 3,344 people saw Matilda here in Titusville. Uh, that was followed by uh, Greece, and we had 5,003 people attend Greece this year. That was followed by uh, Elf the Musical, and Elf the Musical brought in 4,767 patrons through the doors. Of course, that was followed by another huge hit, Mamma Mia. And most of you have seen these shows, so I, you know how great they are. <laughs> and we had 4,046 people attend uh, Mamma Mia. And then our March show, and everybody knows what happened in March, uh, we had a wonderful show called Something Rotten. We were the first theater in all of Florida to, to get to do this show. It was a beautiful show, uh, but it was cut short one weekend. And even with the cut short weekend, we had 3,980. 88 patrons through the door. So it, it was a huge hit. Uh, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't highlight our Rising Stars program and our education program. Um, a lot of you don't know, and because and, we don't do a good job at promoting it, but we bus, uh, we do a, a two, two shows every year that we bus children from all across the county, and we have them as far as Melbourne coming up here to see shows. Uh, this year we did a uh, The Happy Elf at Christmas time for them, and we bring in over 3,000 children uh, just to see those shows and introduce them to theater, and then they go s sit at the park and have have a lunch, and sometimes they go to the the Space Museum and make a whole day of it. So it's a it's a great little event, and we tie that in uh, with with our uh, programs, and we we advertise that to, of course, the the schools, but we do a poor job at telling the community about that. So I like to highlight that when I can. All right, that was our 55th season, and just a couple of quick numbers for you that on on that 55th season, even with the. Uh, we had to cut it short to two main stage shows. We brought in 31,187 patrons to downtown Titusville uh, out, out of that those few shows. We had five main stage productions, two special events, and six education programs. Uh, I did tell you we were streaming uh, Something Rotten, and we had to postpone Titanic and Bright Star into our next year, our next fiscal year. Uh, and Titanic and Bright Star, Titanic opened in July, and Bright Star opened Friday. So hopefully you will all come see Bright Star. <laughs> uh, we did, uh, just to give you a little how the theater was impacted, we did get a PPP loan. Um, the, the theater actually has 15 employees, uh, 15 full-time employees. Um, uh, let me rephrase that. We have 11 full-time salaried employees, and we have four hourly employees. Um, so we were able to keep everyone employed. No one was furloughed. No one was um, laid off. No one. Uh, so we are still trying to struggle alone. We were able to do that by the PPP loan. Also, we got the SBA uh, a economic disaster loan, and we have a huge support system from our patrons and our members. Members, So that has helped us. We have consequently spent a little over $13,000, and I'm sure you can all relate, into things that we had to buy to protect our patrons and our staff and our volunteers when they return into the building. And I'll just put a couple of things there for you. Uh, some of you have been there already, but there's, of course, signage everywhere on the floors, outside, temperature taking at the doors, uh, hand sanitation stations at every single entrance and exit, and something we did unique uh, in our orchestra level, and I don't know if you can even see it there, because there are clear plexiglass panels that are separating every part. So uh, um, I, I told Mr. Uh, Mayor Johnson earlier today that uh, Governor DeSantis had had suggested that to restaurants early on. He was like, maybe you can put plexiglass around booths, and 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 that hit me. And I was like, that's a great idea. So to. Uh, further distance people, you usually have a seat or two between your parties, but uh, we tried to put a, 
a seat or two between parties, and then the plexiglass panel as well. All right, challenges due to, uh, to the COVID-19. Uh, we've had to implement all safety precautions. I bought a, a huge tent that went into a, the vacant lot next door to us. Well, we own the lot, but it's, it, it has no buildings on it right now. Uh, so we conducted all of our summer education programs outside to keep the kids outside, to keep the the spread as low and minimal as possible. Uh, but it has impacted us a lot. We are operating at a 50% occupancy, resulting in a huge re uh, revenue loss. We have revenue loss from bar, merchandise, and concession closure. Uh, and just a number I had to do for the, the Brevard County CARES grant, uh, you had to compare 2019 May to June to 2020 May to June, and we've got a loss of $330,000 since March of 2020 when you do those comparisons. Um, but we're trying to do everything we can. I don't want to put a miserable uh, spin on it. We're doing uh, the best we can. Uh, we, we're streaming shows, and we do have about 150 people scheduled to come see shows live in person until we can get a vaccine and get everybody more comfortable. And uh, I have planned a couple of outdoor shows this year uh, uh, in October. I'm hoping to work with uh, staff get to get permitting and all that stuff correct to uh, to get everything done. I'm also working with Schuler's. We're going to put one show underneath their tent uh, for one weekend. So yeah, we're trying to look outside the box to, to make us still relevant and profitable and uh, uh, all options and we've got streaming rights all the way through the end of the year as well which is very unique all right uh, speaking of things to come the 56th season again I need to promote us uh, we've got Beehive coming up Annie Kinky Boots Tommy Dream Girls Legally Blonde in Brooklyn and we've got four uh, special events um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch Evil Dead the Musical the Rocky Horror Show and a Tuna Christmas um, and in addition to all of those shows, we've got our entire education program. We've already had six summer camps this summer. And uh, and then we have uh, two camps throughout the year as well. And then the at the moment, the, uh, the busing in program, we are not scheduling that until the spring. Hopefully things will be fine, but who knows? Who knows? Which brings me to... Uh, a little bit of the future and why I'm really here today is to, to have a small ask and here's my small ask we're asking if it's possible here we may have a uh, the there may be some monies in a light budget somewhere so I'm requesting if if possible to replace the three street lamps along Julia Street right in front of the theater to coordinate with all the other street lamps in downtown uh you've got a, i've got a beautiful picture of the green one there and we'd love to match you guys and match the rest of downtown and if you see you can barely see but across the street you see our our lovely lovely little red and gold things that are faded two of them actually don't work they they blink on and off at night and uh, uh i know that people are coming out and trying to repair them quite frequently but it would also it would it would match and carry the theming of the downtown west of Hopkins Street if we're able to get those replaced. And that's pretty much my ask today and a little update of what's going on at the Playhouse. Do you have any questions? I don't see you. Go ahead. I, I'm interested in, could you put that picture back up? Yeah. So where is the lights you were talking about? Can I approach you? Too close. I'll show you, I'll friend one out. Uh, it's, there are three right here. Oh, okay. Right by the door. I should They're right in the front of the building. Right, uh, there's three in the block right in front of the theater. Um, yeah. Now, all, all along Hopkins, that side of the, of the building has the, the downtown green. Uh, and I want to say, I, I'm sorry, I don't, do not know the history of those street lamps, but I think the city put them in mm -hmm. back in the 80s. Uh, when they when they remodeled the theater and opened the theater for the first time back back then, that's what I think. I'm not positive. Don't don't quote me on that. Nineteen or eighteen eighties, from what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I funny. saw them the other day. <laughs> My staff asked me today. They're like, but they're historic, aren't they? And I was like, no, they're from the nineteen eighties. <laughs> so, um, the, Tim, do you, we know what these things cost? Uh, I've been told by our public works director that uh, the price now is about $8,000 a pole. Wow. 
there used to be five thousand dollars when they first, when they first went in, and now it's up to about eight thousand a pole. Um, you want the same type of, of pole put in? I mean, is that your request? I'd, yeah, I'd okay. like I, I, I'd like I to see if we sure. could. You, you, sure. I'd like the city to. I mean, I think all of downtown should look unified and the same. Sure. And I, I think it. I think it'd be an asset because uh, do we not consider the city the, the downtown all the way to the railroad tracks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and have I mean, no it's really argument from me. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I'm we're just, just, we're just, I'm just making sure. We're yeah, I, I'd love to have it the same theming. So, uh, are these lights uh, LED lights? I'm sorry. Are these LED lights that would be currently they are not? The purple ones in front of the uh, the the theater are not LED. No, I mean the, the replacement lights to make them look like. Um, I don't know the top of my head. Um, yeah, um, what, what we can do is we can do an analysis and come back to the CRA with a recommendation of what the, what the actual costs are, what you're proposing to purchase, All right. what the installation costs will be, and that sort of thing. And um, if, if, in fact, we have a consensus from the CRA, that would probably be the way yeah. ahead so we can provide you that okay. information. That's not the suggestion. Don't, we have other people to speak. Uh, Member Ball, you're next. Actually, I was just going to help a little with the history because I, I, I hate to confess I was here when that originally <laughs> happened. <laughs> back in 18... I asked the same question. 1880s or 1980s? I think it was something like 1984 or 5 or somewhere in there. I, it was during my first tour of duty on CRA, but it... It, it actually, those three fixtures were installed about the same time that Tysville Commons was done. And if you look back in your CRA project history report, it's it's down pretty early in the in the scheme of things. So those existing fixtures do belong to us. I mean, they belong their their city property or CRA property on the city sidewalk. And if you look down um, west along Julia Street. Uh, they're the three purple ones. If you look anywhere else along um, Hopkins, they're the they're the green ones that match everything else updated in the in the downtown. So um, I think I, I think that's what I'm I'm understanding. Um, You're exactly right to say, and I and I will. Everybody knows this, but I am on the board <coughs> at the Playhouse uh, in a volunteer uh, status, so I I look at them a lot. As I go by, and they, they are deteriorated. So. <laughs> the upside, the uh, the base and the electri electrical and all that stuff is already there. That's the upside, but but uh, yeah, that's the history on them. They were a CRA. Project. Um, excuse me, is there a way for for me to chime in? Who, who is this for? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, can you wait? Uh, I'll, I'll take you after the two lights I already have up here, Dr. Aker, okay? Okay. Uh, 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 Member Nelson? Well, I did have the same questions about... Excuse me. I had the same questions about the price, but I think Tim's covered that. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see us match uh, those lights to the rest of the city. Right. Um, that would be nice. And... From the way Member Ball is looking, I'm assuming those purple ones are pretty ugly. <laughs> but I also wanted to say that I did see Titanic, and I felt very safe in there. I'm glad so, you do. Yeah. We're trying the best we can. And yeah. it's got to be hard. So <laughs> I wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Member Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. Vice Mayor. Uh, yeah, I just simply want to look forward to the analysis because um, I totally agree. You know, I've, I think we've all used you as an example in, in some way, shape, or form about the life of this uh, of, of downtown. And and uh, at one point, I used the term, you know, artificial economic stimulation. Right. Well, you are that. I mean, you are. Except it's not artificial; it's real. And we need to do what we can. And every now and then. While we're on the CRA, every now and then that that thing comes by us. It's uh, I, it hits me that this is what we're here for. You know, we can't afford everything and we can't get everything done, but there's that thing that comes along once in a while, and it's like, this is why we're here. So I look forward to the analysis, and I certainly hope that we can can do something to to make that right. Thank you very much, Dr. Aker. Yeah, I just want to chime in. I have those similar lights in my back parking lot at my office. 
And um, what I did after the polls were redone uh, along US-1, and this is just a, a, a thought, just to give you an idea of the cost. I researched the cost of replacing the uh, top of the lamps, and that was going to be about $1,500 $1, a light. And I chose to just kind of rehab the ones that I had, so I painted them green, and I was able to replace the uh, lighting fixture um, with some LED bulbs that are super, super bright for about $100 a piece. Uh, locally, just if they get into that and, real, and, and look at the price comes back higher. The other thing that I, I think, how many lights are there there now, Stephen? There's three, Dr. Aker. There's three? Yeah. Um, and what's the, I noticed that I would say that our street lights that we're using now aren't, um, aren't as close as those lamps are there. And you, you may further have some savings by um, perhaps leaving the middle one out and putting two lamps in there. Uh, just from the, the lighting standpoint, there's one less pole for someone to um, walk into accidentally. Just just my two cents as some options. Okay. Uh, I see no other lights. I do want to make a comment. Um, the the theater is, is just wonderful. And what I don't understand, though, is... I get there and I, I see the current play and I think it can't get any better than this and then I get there again the next time. It's better every time and it's just uh, amazing to me that you, the advancements you've made. Thank you. I'm, I'm from when I'm, I have a long history with the theater as well as far as going to it and you've done so much for our community. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. We all. couldn't do it without the support so I appreciate it as well. That's true. I'm ready for a uh, motion if you'd like to make I, I don't, Sir, I don't think we need a motion. Nope. I think I've heard consensus from everybody. Oh, okay. We've not heard from um, Member Stokel, but I think I've already got consensus. Okay, that's great. We'll just have it come back at a future uh, meeting Thank with you all so the much. facts. Thank you for your time. Thank I you appreciate for coming. it. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, no old business, no new business. Petitions and requests from the public. Stan Johnson, 860 Poinsett Avenue, and I am here representing myself as a professional engineer uh, that I wrote a letter that was sent to everyone except some other people that I didn't realize, and that's Dr. Aker and, some, and at least one other person. Uh, it's dated August the 6th. Uh, it's, it's a letter that has, it questions uh, the ability of our uh, city manager, our uh, city attorney, and our council members to make good decisions. And uh, I'll read a little bit of it. It's, it's failure to have unregulated floodways, I'm talking about the ones to St. John's River, maintain violates, violates your duty uh, to accomplish uh, the task, that task and several laws such as follows. And one of the laws has to do with this apple, and that is uh, Newton's law of gravity. Uh, in this case is that uh, there's a violation of the law of gravity in the, in the, such that uh, water flows downhill. And the question to answer in the question is, is where does the water go? And I have this. This, was, this is a drawing that was taken from me uh, on March the 12th. I was, I was taken out of council meeting. But this is backwater and flooding that shows uh, over three square miles. Uh, we have six uh, large box culvert, box, well, uh, we have six floodways coming from I-95 from between Fox Lake Road and State Road 50, and five of them look like look like this. They're heavily clogged, so uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So I can, I think we can compare this to what happened in Beirut. Beirut, they had ammonium nitrate, 2,700 tons of it that went off. Now, what's going to happen uh, if we have a lack of God that has this a big 
storms that comes and flood this area, and we have five out of six floodways that are clogged with vegetation, just like I showed you in the picture. Well, obviously, we're going to have something bad happen. Bad happen. And who's going to be responsible? The people that I named. So this is an incredibly irresponsible is what is going on in your decision. It's, it's, there's no excuse. In other words, when you defy, when you oppose, when you ignore gravity, what are you doing? It's absolutely not. It's nonsense. There's no excuse for this. And that's your decision. And I'm going to be asking again at the council meeting for you to approve the petition that was, was uh, written in, that was also written in names of Robert Jordan and Dan Diesel. So why in the world can you possibly be doing this? Your time is up, sir. May I have extra time? No, sir. Okay, thank you. This is not a question, so don't try to answer me. That is, as you have told us several times, those uh, outflows are in the county, not in the city. Please take it to the county and see if they won't do it. Thank you very much. Okay, I've taken it to the county. The county doesn't have your approval. Um, any other petitions and requests from anyone? I see nobody else. Uh, executive director's report. Yes, sir. You have ha my executive director's report. There are no action items. There are informational items uh, and subject to your questions. Any questions? I see none. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, I'll call this meeting adjourned.